I think it's pretty safe to say that one of the more interesting aspects of Star Wars Episode 9 as of right now has all to do with the interactions between both Rey and Kylo Ren, as far as Kylo's endgame and exactly what that's going to be, and Rey's path and exactly where she's going to be during the final frames of this movie. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. So we do know that episode 9 has a lot to offer when it comes to exactly what's going to happen between both Rey and Kylo. And I think that's a very mysterious part of episode 9 right now, right? We do know that Daisy Ridley expressed her feelings today on Good Morning America about the ending of the film. That she was hysterically crying about, you know, the end of the movie and finishing and wrapping it up and how it all ended the Skywalker saga. So what's really intriguing is that these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film. And when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very intense for episode 9. Now specifically, a description of both Kylo Ren and Rey in one of their force bonds, where it's described that Rey is sitting in front of Kylo Ren, who was wearing his helmet during the sequence. It said to be a sequence in which J.J. Abrams demonstrates new force powers for Rey and Kylo. It said that one of the sequences involves both Rey and Kylo Ren, holding both of their hands together where their regular force bond begins to morph into total darkness. It said that this is when the voices of the past are heard, that range all the way from Anakin, Luke, Kenobi, and even Darth Vader. The next describes both Kylo and Rey now standing up, where it's described that they are now said to hear the laughter of Darth Sidious in the background, where the environment begins to morph around them to the moment in which Vader lifts up Palpatine and kills him on the Death Star 2, where once the explosion occurs, the environment changes to another moment that is now said to involve Luke standing over Vader's funeral pyre, to which it's eventually a moment that leads to a vision of the future, where both Rey and Kylo see a shadowy figure walking toward them and igniting its red lightsaber blade, only for the force bond to crumble and split, where Rey is back in the crystal cave and Kylo is on board of his Ravager Star Destroyer. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now we do know that episode 9 is going to evolve the use of force bonds and flash fights, and exactly where that's all going to lead to by the end of the movie. Now this is said to be a moment based within the second act and showing us glimpses of the past and the future between both Rey and Kylo Ren. Witnessing the moment in which Palpatine was destroyed by Darth Vader as well as the moment in which Luke Skywalker was having the funeral for Darth Vader on Endor. That leads to a moment in which both Rey and Kylo Ren see a little glimpse to the future, like looking through a keyhole, not the full picture here, but getting a glimpse where they see a shadowy figure walking toward them, which is said to be a piece of foreshadowing of what's to come by the very end of the film, where they fight the new dark acolyte, also known as Vance, who holds a connection to the spirit of Sidious. Now prior to all of this, they're said to be sitting in front of each other where Kylo Ren is wearing his helmet, they begin to hold hands, and that's exactly where the environment begins to turn into total darkness, where they hear the voices of Darth Vader, Kenobi, Luke, and others. Somewhat reminds me of the worlds between worlds, I don't know about you guys, but this really seems like J.J. Abrams delivering something to the fans that's going to give us a live action version of the worlds between worlds or at least something that mimics that moment in Star Wars Rebels. And it would also make a lot of sense because we do know that JJ had a lot of discussions with Dave Filoni who is the showrunner of Star Wars Rebels so it would make a lot of sense if this indeed ended up being the worlds between world itself. So moving on from all of this all right this also does fall directly in line with what we heard a couple of months ago about them trying to recreate some scenes where Darth Vader destroys Palpatine and Luke Skywalker is witnessing the funeral of Darth Vader on Endor. All those different scenes being recreated to pretty much, you know, fit itself seamlessly into this sequence between both Rey and Kylo Ren and giving us that force bond that it begins to evolve in the second act. Now, I'm not quite sure how fans are going to react to these force bonds and these flash fights and all these crazy visions and stuff around those lines. Keep in mind that this is something that was big in Star Wars Legends, not just for Jason Solo, but also for other characters around, you know, the entire galaxy. So that's one thing to look forward to, is that we do know that Chris Terrio, he loves Star Wars Legends, and that's exactly why we're getting a lot of Legends content that's making its way into the Star Wars canon, or Disney is cherry-picking from the EU and implementing that into this story. Now, what's really interesting is about the shadowy figure, how... 
you know, it's said to be approaching both Kylo Ren and Rey just as the Force Bomb begins to crumble and before it begins to split into two, leaving both Kylo Ren and Rey in separate environments where Rey is now elsewhere and Kylo Ren is on board of his Ravager Star Destroyer. So, what I like about this also is that J.J. Abrams really is trying to create an experience that's really going to make itself stand, you know, away from The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens and something that will truly evolve the Star Wars franchise. Anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.